Greetings. Welcome to Jeb Adams channel. I hope that you find something useful here. I publish a new video every Friday. So come on back every Friday. Appreciate it. So my restorer's life is continuing. These big parts of the motor here, these three big parts, main parts, have already been washed. I started out by cleaning this end of the, the housing with that all there and that part and then after I got that cleaned I washed that. I still have to decide, decide how I'm going to finish cleaning these or if they're acceptable yet or what I'm going to do with these. The other thing I want to point out is the thousand grit sandpaper for which I would use to sand the commutator on the end of the spindle there. So I'll just uh, I'll just show you how I uh, I'm going to get that clean. I have the electrical contact cleaner here, and that's what I'm going to use to clean the the motor. I've got this all this copper winding and the wires and all that. So I'm just going to give I'm going to hold on to it by the wires and. Uh, start there and see what drips off. That's why I'm doing it over these blue towels. And then this is allowed to evaporate. We don't have to dry it or anything like that. So I'll put that one down there. Like it's not terrifically dirty, it's just that it's grubby and grimy more than anything. So it looks like a bit of grime is dripping down off, off that. I still am going to clean that commu commutator, sand it down, and uh, I'll get to that before it's reassembled. So there's the, we didn't get an awful lot of dirty, you know, grubby results off that. So I'll let that evaporate quietly, peacefully there. And that's the extent of of the cleaning I'm going to do on the on those parts of the motor. The next thing I cleaned was this bakelite half of the housing, and I just did that in the kitchen sink with dishwashing liquid and water, and uh, so that's how I cleaned that all. But before I show you how I did that. Before I re, uh, reassemble this, this uh, end spindle here, it is going to go right down there and so I will clean that up but that's where I put a drop of oil right down there at the bottom where the spindle is going to go. So we'll go back to the, I'll take you into the kitchen and uh, show you the bang up job I'm doing on uh, washing this part of the housing. Here I have the other half of the, the motor housing. This is the, the half that uh, where the bottom bearing goes. And this is Bakelite, it's like a hardened plastic or some kind of synthetic, very tough, but very easy to clean. And I don't use electronic contact cleaner. Or... And this wasn't dirty to begin with. Like it was grimy, dirty, but it wasn't greasy. Like I don't have to degrease this or anything like that. So this is just going to be a, a simple straight wash and, uh, and dry. But nonetheless, I wanted to, to show you how I do it just kind of in my kitchen sink. And it's a pretty simple straightforward procedure. I'm ready to put the bottom bearing back in here. Before I do that, I just want to point out that a lot of these things here 
all they really need is a drop of oil. And what I'm talking about is this shim that goes in between the black half housing and the silver housing or chrome housing. That needs to be oiled. This is the insulator that goes in here. It does not need to be oiled so we won't oil that. I'm not going to oil the brushes and their springs and their tubes. And as we see these tubes have slots in them so when we replace, when we put these back in the motor, we make sure the slots are facing the outside so that when we check the brushes, we can see how much spring and how much brush is in there. So they're not going to be oiled, so we don't have to deal with that. That I am not going to touch. I kind of swept it, I touched it a little bit. These are really fragile, so I would strongly suggest that you be really, really gentle with it. Um, so I'm going to put that over there. Those aren't going to be touched. Those are okay. They were wiped down. So all I really have to do is just give these double-ended, these through nuts. I call them through nuts because there's a thread right through. And, you know, when it's all put together, It ends up looking like that. So let's get some oil on this right now. And we'll do it back here so if it falls on the paper towel, it falls down there. Because it is going to fall. So that's a generous amount of oil. And then all we're doing is we're threading it in, unthreading this one, threading that one in. And they're nice and loose, so we can just use our hands and get our fingers, fingers oily. So that's the one. And then I take my oily fingers, and I just grab the... And thread it ends. And get some oil on them. So it's pretty straightforward, routine stuff clean or oil, you know, clean, I mean even oiling is a, is a cleaning. It doesn't all have to be electronic cleaner and, and uh, degreaser and all those hard, hard things. So I'll leave those in there like that. I'll move that out of the way. My next thing that I want to do is I want to get this bottom bearing back in and it certainly needs a bit of oil so we'll we notice that the, the bottom bearing it has a slot there and I think that is for maybe oiling purposes or cooling purposes like for air uh, movement for air circulation inside the bearing so I've wiped it with you know I've drenched it in oil and now I'm just wiping off the oil one thing that I had wanted to mention back when we were cleaning these parts of the electric motor with the electronic um, connector cleaner, with the electronic circuit cleaner, um, be generous, especially in your application in this, be generous with the electronic Electrical contact cleaner, that's what they call it, electrical contact cleaner. So I wanted to mention that to you. Anyway, without further ado, I'm going to see if I can make some progress here. We really, I've got the, the ball in there now. And take a look at how this is built. Where am I here? Here I am. Take a look at how this is built, you know. Play with it before you start getting it all back together. I'm going to use, hopefully, I'm going to be able to hold one end of this spring clip, like this thumb end here. Hopefully I'm going to hold one end down with my thumb, and then I'll use either pliers or needle pliers or a screwdriver or something else. So let me see if I can get lined up here, kind of let you see what I'm doing. And so 
so I have that end in and I'm just gonna see if well I missed I was trying with both my thumbs but I may not be strong enough obviously obviously it's easier to take these things apart than put them back together again. So let me see if I can do it with the needle nose pliers, or maybe I should just try the pliers. It's a, it's a little bit of a balancing act, and you know, play with it, check it out. Did I get it? I got it. See, so it's in now. But you see the, the little ball bearing down there, where the bearing is crooked. And all we do is we, you can take, I take the pliers, needle nose pliers, get that like that, and then I put the spindle in there just to line it up so that when I go to put everything back together, it lines up straight and true like that. And this is empty here, but I'm just going to throw a little bit of oil in there and leave it at that, just a drop. Let's see what comes out when I touch the shop cloth. There, we see that little drop there. And then just put it back in there nicely and give it a spin. So that ball bearing and the spindle it's rotating together. We hear it's nice and smooth. No friction or stuttering or anything. So that's as far as I'm going to go with this for now. And next time I come back, I'm going to finish putting this together. And we'll move forward from there. Thank you for, thank you for coming and watching. I appreciate your, your help.